Hey folks, and welcome back to the Colton Woods Horsemanship YouTube channel. Guys, today we're gonna to be doing something really fun and probably one of my most favorite hobbies that I've spent way too much time doing, and probably you have too, and that is shopping for horses online. Yep, that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be going through and shopping for some horses online, and I'm gonna share with you guys my process for when I'm looking for horses online and how to make sure that we don't end up in that category of the heartbreak and the money hole that comes with buying horses off-site and unseen. We've all heard of the amount of money that people have lost, the heartbreak that comes around because we get our emotions tied up in buying this dream horse that we would so love to have and then it turns up and it's nothing like it was represented in the ad and then we have this guilty conscience so when we try to resell the horse we're taking a major loss on it or we're sitting on it and we're investing into this horse and we don't want to end up in that situation and you don't have to end up in that situation when you understand what to look for in sales videos you understand which questions to ask the trainers and you've done your preparation work with for yourself before you've ever even started horse shopping and so that's exactly what we're going to go through today i'm going to go through an upcoming auction that is going to be available online where people are going to be shopping for horses here in just a couple of weeks i'm going to use those horses as examples for what we're going to be looking for share with you guys these questions but before we dive into that there's one thing that we have to do and that we have to do this together all right, and that is that you have to hit that like and subscribe button down below so that the YouTube algorithm and the Facebook algorithm can pick up this video. That is how you support this channel and ultimately it supports this video so that other people that are out there online horse shopping so that they get the proper information they need. So guys, just take a second real quick, go down there, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that every time we post a video, you are notified of our upcoming video. I'll give you just a quick second. All right, well, now that that's taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this topic. Regardless if you're looking to buy a Mustang here in this particular auction, or you're gonna be buying a horse in another auction, or if you're looking on YouTube and you're, or excuse me, if you're looking on Facebook, or if you're using Equine Trader, or if you're using Ranch World Ads, whatever, whatever site that you could be horse shopping on, these, these processes, these questions that we're gonna be sharing with you today are the exact same ones that you can use, regardless if you're probably bidding in a public auction or you're, you're negotiating with someone in a private treaty type situation where you're messaging with them or texting or calling them back and forth. These are the same things that we need to go do. Now, the first thing is, there's gonna be a lot of questions that we have for the trainers and the professionals that have been educating these horses. And so, we need to make sure that we have our ducks in a row. And the first question that we have to ask ourselves is what is our budget? All right, that's gonna be really important because you have a budget. You have to have a budget. If you don't have a budget and you're gonna go in an auction setting and your emotions are wrapped up in a horse, you can end up overpaying for a horse, overcommitting to pay for a horse that you absolutely cannot afford, all right? But also you have to have a budget too so that when you're asking questions and one of the first questions being, you know, how much is this horse for sale for? If you're buying it through Friday Trade, they're gonna have a price on the horse. If you're going through auction and someone's gonna be there to protect their investment, hey, what's the reserve on that horse? If the reserve is way more than what you can afford to pay, then there's no sense in wasting anybody's time asking a thousand questions and spending all these hours of time getting videos and extra pictures and all these things, all to come to find out that you're too, that what the horse is priced at and what your budget is is two totally different things. So. You need to know what your budget is. You need to be realistic. If you're married, you probably need to talk to your spouse. How much can we afford to spend on this horse? Now, with this particular auction, and as well as buying horses online, a lot of times these horses are not located just around the corner. So we have to understand that there's some additional costs, like hauling a horse across the country. And you probably have to pay for a health certificate. Usually the buyer, or excuse me, usually the seller will provide the Coggins, um, for its equine infectious anemia test, so that's up to date for that. Usually they already have to have that to be in a sale, or if a horse person is selling a horse, they're gonna make sure that Coggins is up to date. But usually you have to pay for the health certificate so that horse can be transported from wherever it is to your facility, and that's gonna cost you probably around $30 or so. And then you have transportation. Now this just strictly depends on how far that horse is from your facility and you can get quotes from all sorts of reputable horse hauling companies and you want to make sure that you find a horse hauler that's licensed that's insured and that they're actually official you can find a lot of cheap horse haulers out there that don't have the proper registration and the proper paperwork going on they don't have the insurance so if something were to happen to your horse even if you had insurance on your horse and they weren't with a licensed hauler a lot of times your insurance company 
won't validate whatever happened to your horse because you put the horse in the hands of someone who doesn't carry their own insurance. So there's a lot of things that you need to take in consideration. And one of those is hauling that horse across the country because that can be fairly expensive. You know, that could cost you another 500 to to $1,000, maybe even more depending on how far the distance is and who you hire to haul that horse. But we have to know the budget, all right? And then the second thing that we need to sit down and talk about is we need to know what we're looking for in that horse. What are you going to use this horse for? What is this horse going to fill as part of your your journey, your partnership that you want to build with this horse? Are you looking to do trail riding? Are you looking to do the ranch riding? Are you looking for a competition or performance horse to go into the hunter jumpers, the eventing, the dressage ran, the reining? Are you looking for what are you looking for in this horse and what does it need to fulfill? Does it need to be a high end performance horse that also can go out and trail ride that's easy to be around and manage that doesn't have any quirks or what is it, what does it need to do? What is it? And, and you can be as specific as how is it to pick up its feet, right? You want a total video, particularly for this event of being the Mustang makeover event. You want to see everything. Because in the Mustang makeover event, these horses have only had between 100 and 120 days worth of training ever, right? Just 100 to 120 days ago, these horses were feral, completely untouched horses. And so we have to make sure that we see everything that is going on when you're going to commit to buying a horse. Now, when you're buying some more domestic horses that have grown up in the domesticated life, certainly some of these things we may not be as quite concerned about, but having bought horses in the past and then been a little surprised by some of their quirks and their nuances that I didn't think to ask for, I am way more cautious now about what I am going to ask and I would rather over ask questions and get way more details than, than what would seem necessary to make sure that I'm getting a horse that is enjoyable to be around, that fits the lifestyle that I live with my horses and that I want to be able to do with my horses. So right now, one of the best things you can do is to sit down and describe your perfect horse. What does it, how does it behave when it's in the field? Does it need to live with other friends uh, as far as equine friends? Um, do you have donkeys that needs to go out with or goats or does it need to live with, uh, is it going to live with another herd of horses? Is it mares and geldings, just mares, other geldings? What does that look like? How does it act when it's in the barn? What is its lifestyle going to be? Is it a performance horse? Is it inside in a stall more often? Or is it going to be turned out all the time? You need to sit down and write down all the skills that your horse needs to know how to do. Does it need to tie? Does it need to cross tie? Does it need to stand ground tied for the farrier because your farrier doesn't bring help and you can't be there to help the farrier, right? You need to write down all of these things, everything from does it, how well does it trailer? Does it need to self-load or does, can you teach it to get on a trailer later on, right? Does it need to have lead changes? Does it need to do sliding stops? Does it just need to be generally broke and go left and right, back up, stop when you ask it to stop, cross over a creek, right? I'm just throwing out a lot of different ideas, but you need to be very intentional with what the skills that you know this horse needs to have that is going to fill the need that you have because you're going to buy you're buying a horse you're buying a product that and you need to know what you want and so it's as simple as that and then it comes down to the specifics specifics of the horse how tall does this horse need to be what sex does the horse need to be right we're asking all of these questions before we've ever even started horse shopping. You need to be honest about what type of horse you get along with. And this is one of those things that it's, it's nothing against the trainer that you'll talk to in the future. It's nothing against the horse that you'll consider in the future. It's just what is going to work best for you. And oftentimes it feels like we're painting this picture of a unicorn situation. And that's perfectly fine. Because depending on your budget depends on how, what you're going to be able to get. You know, the more specific and the more picky we are, with what we're looking for, depending on those elements um, that are with what we're looking for, sometimes we might have to pay a little bit extra to get those things. And if we don't quite have the budget we're going to pay those things, sometimes we have to kind of give and take a little bit. But there are some things that are hard and fast. The height probably going to be hard and fast. Nothing shorter than this height, nothing taller than this height. Um, you might be dead set on just a mare, just a gelding. And you might be dead set on certain skills that it needs to have, right? Because there's horses of all different experience levels, all different training levels. Another thing that is really important to be honest with ourselves about is write down how often you plan on working with this horse. 
do you plan on just riding once a week on the weekends? Do you plan on riding five, six days a week? How often do you plan on working with this horse? We have to be honest about this because the horses that we're buying are coming from different lifestyles, different setups as far as their day-to-day -day management as well as their riding schedule. Some horses are in intense work, some horses are in barely any work. Some horses might not be in any in, in any type of work if we're just buying them straight out of the field. Just to be honest with yourself on how often you will actually be having a training or a working session with that animal because all the horses that you'll consider will require something a little bit different. And at this point, you are looking for something that fits your lifestyle, fits the schedule that you have going. That way, it can be benefit and it can work out for the both of you. And the other thing that goes along with the budget is, will you be investing in additional lessons or additional training once you get this horse? Now, this is a question for a lot, uh, all types of horses that we could be particularly buying, but specifically for this particular auction of the Extreme Mustang Makeover, auction because these horses have only had between 100 and 120 days worth of training ever and we saw in the group just a couple of weeks ago that someone said which they were looking for a beginner level horse and thankfully somebody stepped in and Craig stepped in and said hey listen if anyone tells you in this group that any of these horses are ready for a beginner right now they're lying to you and those weren't his exact words but they were pretty close and the fact of the matter is that's the truth that's the truth because they only have between 100 and 120 days. That doesn't mean the horses don't have the potential to be a beginner horse later on, but we have to make sure when we're looking at investing in these horses as far as a purchase price and the price to get them to us is, do we ha are we setting ourselves up for success and the horse up for success? And if we cannot provide the additional education that that horse may need as far as from our skill set, do we have the funds to hire somebody that can help us and help that horse get those additional skill set? That's something that you need to take into consideration because maybe you're willing to spend $7,500, right? And you're like, I can spend $7,500 on this horse. And you get to talking to the trainers and then they say, well, and you start to think, maybe I could buy that horse for $5,000 and then I can take the $2,500 and I can put that towards additional training and additional lessons, that might serve you way better than buying the $7,500 horse. Because ultimately, investing in your own education is investing in your own skill sets that you can take back when that horse is home with you. All right. So we got to make sure that we've, we've done our work up front and then we've gone through this thing of setting your budget, understanding how much it's going to cost to buy the horse, to get the horse home, if you're going to put any additional training and invest in lessons with that horse, all very important topics. You have to know exactly the skills that you want that horse to have when you purchase it, right? Not the skills that you would want to teach it later. You can do all that later, but the skills that the horse must have when you get it and how that horse is minded, right? Does it pick its feet up, but is it resistant when it picks its feet up or does it, is it nice and gentle and it picks its feet up really well? You know, when you get on it, does it stand to get on it? Does it have to be able to do that? Because maybe your balance isn't so good and you need to be able to use a mounting block and step up on that horse. Gotta be honest about this stuff. Depending on the level of horse that you're looking to buy, does it need to have auto lead changes? Does it need to already be going over fences? Does it already need to have a sliding stops and the turnarounds? Right? Does it need to be able to work a gate, work a cow? Can you rope off of it? Whatever you're looking for, right? make that list of things and it could be a pretty long list but that's okay because you're going to pay for it right it's not like you're being unreasonable if you have a budget that matches what you're looking for you can find that horse and it's not like and you might be feel like heck i'm getting a good deal and that seller's gonna feel like they're getting a good deal because they're getting your money and so as long as everybody's happy you know make sure that you know what sex and how tall and how big how thick <laughs> you want those horses to be and then write all of that down of what you want to be able to do with your new horse. And so that when you start to have these conversations with the trainer, that you can find out if this horse is going to be a good fit. And of course, make sure, one last thing, of how often you're going to be working with your horse. That's going to be really important as we get into the questions that we ask our trainer. All right. So next we're going to get into what we're going to look for in the sales videos. So we're on the Extreme Mustang Makeover website. We're going to go on Lexington, going on the right side and clicking View Available Horses, which is going to take us to the SuperiorLivestock.com website. And 
On the side with the left hand, it says lots with video. On the side with the right, it says lots without video. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and look through here. I'm just gonna pick a random name. Um, let's go with lot 50, taking chances or taking chances. So we've got a horse coming down the trail here at a pretty good click, nice little trot. Um, pretty careful coming down through, about to go through the water. She's riding in a western saddle with a side pull. Horse is real confident and calm going through the water. Um, here in this, I'm just looking for the pace, the relaxation, uh, looking for the confidence in the horse. Does the horse happy? See, the horse is not swishing its tail. It goes up the bank pretty quick, but maybe the, the rider asks for that. Um, I like the fact that this horse is actually going to work. Um, that's, that's pretty damn cool in my book. I like a horse that can go and do a job. And so they're here, there's dogs going around, there's stuff sitting in the round pen. And as she kind of makes this turn, the, uh, the horse that she's riding, which is, um, of course is the one that is going to be uh, available for adoption, taking chances, uh, it, it swishes its tail a bit in these turns. So, but as I read down here and I look and it says that the horse's uh, 14 hands, taking chances, also known as sassy, is just that. Sassy with a lot of character. She trail rides great and is not herd bound or bud or bound. She should care less about other horses when under saddle. All of those things are really great. Um, so the horse sounds like it has a bit of spunk. So if I'm going to contact this trainer and this is something, a horse that I might be interested in, I might ask her, like, how does that sassiness show up, right? How, how willing is the horse when you go to put a leg on? Does the horse give you a little bit of attitude? Because right here, it's hard to tell and I don't want to make assumptions because this is something I would ask the trainer is, hey, when I put my leg on, does that horse um, willingly give to it because or not um, just get to know you really need to get to know that horse and that's why you ask that question um, that I'm gonna share with you guys later on what that horse would be best suitable for so I'm gonna come back over here and let's find another one let freedom reign that's another good name uh, lot 46 so really nice photo to start with and as this starts to play let freedom reign trained by Marley Oliver uh, really nice job with the video Marley and 15 hands, six year old, and she is seriously one of the smartest horses. And so let's go ahead and see, this video is 17 minutes long. The last one that we watched was only about two and a half minutes. You get some really nice videos, starts right off going into the trailer loading. And so these are the things that you wanna be able to see, right? So we got the horse going in the trailer. I'm gonna scrub through this just a little bit. Horse comes out of the trailer. Let's see here. Um, doing a little bit of the in hand work, probably a lot. This video is probably taken for her submission for the actual competition. The horse jogs off nice, so the horse can trot in hand. I'm just gonna kind of scrub through this and see what she's got going on here. This was a video from her getting saddled in the arena. So you'd want to make sure you'd if you're seriously interested in these horses, you want to go back and make sure you actually watch this, these whole videos. These this is what's important, right? Here she's going in, she's gonna do a little bit of groundwork and send that horse off onto the circle. So all of this, I'm looking for the willingness in the horse, the relaxation in the horse. I'm looking for what I would be, what would suit me in my own environment, right? Now, it looks like Marley's video is, um, this is part of, part of the sales part. So I'd go through and watch all of that groundwork. And then here it looks like she's getting ready to get on from a mounting block. So if you need to use a mounting block, this would be an important skill to be sure to ask the trainer, hey, can this horse do this? Or if you watch in the video, then you can see, hey, is this horse actually confident and competent in getting on from the mounting block? And so it looks like Marley's gonna step up here and put a foot in. Horse is nice and quiet, nice and relaxed. All really, really good stuff. There's people watching in the background. And so you keep going through this video. I'm gonna fast forward quite a bit. There she is cantering around with a nice stop. And so this would be another situation where I'd kind of ask her uh, here later, you guys will hear I ask what kind of bit they're riding their horses in. Um, this one looks to be in some kind of a leverage bit, but we don't know what kind of mouthpiece that, that is. And so we would just ask, hey, what is this horse most comfortable and confident in? And I'm looking for the comfort, the tempo, the cadence in the horse. Does the horse look really balanced? Um, this horse does. I really, I actually really like this horse uh, quite a bit. And so, and she's a really pretty horse. So that makes it all the more the plus. So I'm going to fast forward a fair bit here. Oh, here we're trail riding. So good. If, you, if it's trail riding is important to you, then you can go through and watch 
all of this as well. And she's, it looks like she's gone a fair bit through a lot of the, the requirements that would be um, required of her at the Extreme Ice Iron Competition. And then here's a little bit of some shenanigans going on with the horse leading beside a bicycle. So just probably showing how broke the horse is. But let's go ahead and find another one. Guys, when I'm looking through these videos, we're looking to see the, the look in the horse's eye. We're looking to see how that horse is relaxed in its body, how the horse interacts and engages with that trainer. And so let's go ahead and see. Uh, let's find another one here. Uh, let's kind of go towards the top. La Genia. I'm going to screw that name up. But uh, this one is trained by trainer Luke Castro. I've seen some of Luke's stuff on Facebook. Um, so this is this is a pretty cool thing. He's got a nice little sorrel mare. Looks like some Robicano traits to her. She stands 14 hands. One of the coolest little Mustangs I've ever had the opportunity to work with. She is the epitome, and they only got a limited amount of text available in these descriptions. But he's got a 13 minute video. Starts off with the horse moving around. I don't mind. It doesn't look like he had to do that to catch the horse, but it looked like it was a good opportunity to see how that horse moves on their own. That can be really important. If I'm looking to buy a horse, I'd really want to be able to see how a horse moves on their own because I can see, hey, is that horse trotting around smoothly? Is it lame? Is there a little bit off in a step? All these types of things. Luke starts off with being able to show you how you can groom this horse. I, I do like that he's moving pretty swift with this horse. It shows that the horse is comfortable with someone moving pretty quick. He's using two hands. He's standing right behind the horse. Um, all of these things are really good representations of what this horse is. The horse is paying more attention to the camera than it is to Luke, which is kind of cool. So um, he's got it groomed off here. I'm going to fast forward a little bit so that we can kind of see what all they got going on. Oh, heck, look at this. Luke's got the pair of clippers and he's showing you that you can clip your horse's muzzle. So if that's something that you like to do with your horses and you want to keep them from growing a beard, then you can certainly, you can see that Luke has demonstrated that this horse is very accepting of the clippers. All pretty cool. Um, I'll go back just a tiny bit, see if I can get the saddling in there. So here Luke goes, tossing the saddle on there. Um, clearly his little mare here is cool as a cucumber with that whole deal. She's wearing some nice sport boots. And again, I haven't looked at these, there's some photos and then Luke's gonna lead her over. So this one is in the Hackamore. And so you can see this looks more like a traditional type Hackamore and Luke's gonna show you that he's taught this horse to actually side pass up to the mounting block, super handy, Luke. And so that, that's a, you know, that might be one of those things on your wish list that you wish that your horse might be able to do. Um, but maybe if it just led up to the mounting block, that would be perfectly just fine or just be able to get on from there. But, and you know, maybe that's how Luke normally gets on his horses. But, you know, I like that he was really casual and for my liking, for, he, he kind of just hopped right up there on that horse. Not super careful, but he just jumped right up on that horse and that mare was stood confident and quiet. I really, really, really like that. Um, some people go, oh, that was kind of reckless. Well, you know what? I like it because that, show, that shows that that horse is prepared. That horse is tolerant. That horse can stand there if you don't have the smoothest mounting technique. And that's nothing against Luke in that. That just, to me, that's good, right? That's really good. You want to be able to see that. So, and then Luke's riding his little horse around here. Um, nice little trot. I really love a Hackamore horse. I'm really biased about that. I, um, I'm kind of sad this horse is all the way in California because I really do like this horse, how it moves around. It looks like Luke's done a really nice job. The horse is soft and relaxed, responsive to the seat. Um, I'm going to fast forward here a little bit just to kind of see what we got going on. Uh, here he's going through a cowboy curtain. You can see the horse has been, you know, got some confidence going through that. He's been backing up through the cowboy curtain. Keep going. And so all the meanwhile, guys, all of it I'm looking for is the horses, how the person is moving around the horse and how the horse is responding to the person. Is the horse confident, relaxed? What all do they do with these? If you're seriously looking at buying these horses, you need to watch all of these videos through and through, and you need to be highly critical of them. Not because you have anything against the trainers, but because you need to make sure you're getting what you're paying for. Well, excuse me, you need to make sure that what you buy is what you need and want. It's not the trainer's fault that you buy a horse that isn't suitable for you. You need to do the homework to make sure that horse is actually what you're looking for. All right, so we'll fast forward through Luke's video here towards the end. Heck, 
Luke's even got his horse going bridleless here. Um, so this is going to be pretty cool. Um, it, to me, it's not necessarily, you know, maybe you would love to be able to ride your horse bridleless, but what it shows to me more is the extent of the education that the horse has. The horse that goes bridleless has to be way responsive to the seat. So if you're a person that rides more off your hands, you're like, well, bridleless doesn't do me a whole lot of good because I'm used to riding with my hands. But if you're somebody that um, rides through your seat a lot more and you like a horse that is going to be very confident, very understanding, heck, Luke's got his working a gate bridleless. So he's got the hindquarter control. He's got control of the shoulders. The horse is quiet enough to work that middle gate. All super, super stuff here. Um, very good. He's working and he's riding that horse across the road there. Cars coming by. Um, really nice job, Luke. Really, really cool job with that particular horse. Um, and then let's go to, let's see if there's another one in here. We'll do one more and we'll call it good. Um, Sweet Like Sugar. I'm actually, from, I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to this horse, but I know Craig a little bit. And so this is a six-year-old buckskin mare. And Craig's actually going to be competing in Road to the Horse in 2021 as one of the wild, or he's, I, I don't know if it's necessarily through the, the wild card program, but he's competing with um, Cole Cameron and Extreme Wileen in that. And so that's going to be super exciting to watch. So Craig's got his buckskin mare. Again, he shows you that he can catch the horse up there in its pen, brushing that mare off and picking up the feet. So you can see how the mare responds when she picks up her feet. And all of these things, we're just looking at the little bitty details. Craig's showing you, hey, he can get up underneath that horse just like a farrier would. He can put his knee against that horse's cannon bones, ask that horse to step out a little bit more. Um, Craig looks to be maybe, and I don't want to be judgmental on this, but maybe being a little bit careful with those hinds. I'm not familiar with this horse at all. So these are the things that I'm just trying to interpret how that goes. Is that how Craig normally does things? Or is it hey, that horse maybe is a little bracy in the hind feet. I'm not trying to say that to raise any concern. It's just questions that if I was interested in buying these horses, that I'd say, hey, how's that, how's that horse with its hind feet? The front feet look great, um, but how is she with her hinds? No, it's just asking. Just asking, right? Everyone likes to take this stuff personal and get a little judgmental. I'm not being judgmental at all. The horses are where they're at. These particular horses only have 120 days. These sales videos are way more extensive than any sales video that you'll find on the internet. Because these guys are trying to show you the full representation of what these horses are capable of doing. That is important. You go to buy a sport horse, you go to buy a performance horse, other things like that. They're not showing you how they pick up their feet. They're showing you how they ride. But if I'm going to go buy a horse that is only showing me a riding video, I'm going to go visit that horse. And I say, hey, I want to go get that horse out of the stall. I want to tack that horse up. I want to brush its legs off. I want to put its boots on because I want to know how that horse is around there. And I might even watch the guys do it just to see how they do it. Sometimes horses are more accustomed to how someone does things. And it's not that they're worried about the saddle or the saddle pad, but maybe someone just saddles them differently and it kind of throws them off a little bit. Those are things that we have to be mindful of. So Craig's got his horse doing a little bit of groundwork here and horse very responsive, very soft in the halter, super, super nice. Um, looks like a very floaty mover, very smooth mover. That's pretty cool. Um, Craig's showing you, hey, the horse understands that she can keep moving on the circle while that flag is moving around, not worried about that at all. She's actually licking and chewing during that. Those are things you need to pay attention to. Horse is working around there, <clears throat> very responsive, but very relaxed, very calm in their step and licking and chewing while they're moving. He touched her there in the flank with that flag, no problem. Here, this is another great representation. So here you can actually see the mouthpiece that Craig's going to use, which is it looks like a smooth snaffle two-piece snaffle he's bridling her here and very nice you know she's a really really cute mare craig's done a really nice job with her and so here craig's got on his little mare here and go for a ride i'm probably gonna walk around a bit i'll kind of see if we can get to some trot work so you want to watch her move around a little bit see how she moves and you're just observing. You're just taking in the slightest, slightest deal and coming up with questions that you might be might want to ask. And I'm going to share with you guys here in just a few minutes the questions that um, I would really want to ask some of these. And you can add in questions based on what you see in these videos. But the questions I'm going to share with you are going to be some 
some additional questions that I that will get you get these trainers or any seller or consigner to share a little more information about these particular horses. So here Craig's kind of demonstrating some more body control, which is really, really nice. Uh, I'll kind of go back just a little bit. It looks like he was riding with the rope, and here he's going to do a little bit of roping. Man, the mare's just super calm, super relaxed. He's able to coil that rope up pretty carelessly, um, pretty quick, and the mare just stands there, hangs out, no problems. Here he's got a stock whip, or a bull whip, whatever you would like to call it. And there, he, There's no sound in these videos, but you can tell he obviously cracked that whip, and she's just walking right along. So you can see the horse is pretty quiet. Here's got a nice obstacle course. This is super handy to have for training. Mary going over some trot poles. And she's going around here. And really, really nice. Go through the tire. And so you guys can see like what this horse has had experience with. What the horse complement going through the little kiddie pool. And all the things. These are things that you just want to watch. So you're looking for how the horse is doing this. Is the horse engaged? Is the horse relaxed? You know, or on the contrary, is the horse more abrasive? Is the horse more worried about everything? How does the horse guide between the reins? How does the horse respond to the leg? And, you know, in the most basic sense, you want to see how that horse's expression is. And then you're looking for what the horse is capable of doing. But if the horse looks nervous and looks worried and looks, looks tight and looks tense, and you're not confident with riding a horse in a, that has those types of emotions, that might not be a horse for you. But guys, with all that being said, there's a few sales videos that we've gone through really looking for how these horses are responding, looking for how they move, the type of tempo. You really have to understand how to interpret horse behavior. If you are not super comfortable with going, hey, is that how that horse naturally is? Or is that horse tight and tense? Is it how, are, if you're not comfortable interpreting horse behavior and horse emotions and those types of things, you might want to find somebody that can help you do that. And someone that is comfortable looking at videos and saying, hey, yeah, that horse looks really lax, looks really tight. Or, oh, there's a spot right there. It looks a little, I'd ask them about that and see what was going on there. You can ask the nitpicky details. If you don't feel confident doing it, find a professional, find someone that's more experienced um, with doing this and look through these videos with that kind of an eye. We're not necessarily looking for, can it go through logs? Can it go through water? Can you rope up it? Can you ride it bridleless? Can you trail ride it? We're not looking necessarily for that. We're looking for how the horse does their job. Are they willing? Are they relaxed? Are they confident? Are they calm? Are they understanding? All those types of concepts first, then what they can do second. But now let's say that we've narrowed our list down. We found a few horses. There, heck, there's some really nice horses that we just saw here on the website. And now let's go ahead and dive into these questions that I would be asking them when it's time to contact the trainer. So we've gone ahead and done our horse shopping and the next thing that we need to do is we're going to be talking about reaching out to these trainers to get more information. These sales video gives us, some of these sales videos give us a lot of information. Some of them were upwards of 20 minutes, some were about the 8 to 10 minute mark and other, some of these horses didn't even have sales videos, right? Which really isn't that great but hopefully they'll be able to get those uploaded before the auction comes but ultimately we have to do what's best for us we have to talk to the trainers that have provided the information about the horses that pique our interest and meet the needs that we need to have right because these videos represent these horses in their best light and we want to make sure that they will fit the lifestyle. What you can do is, is that when you reach out to these trainers you can say hey so and so I'm interested in potentially adopting or buying your particular horse. Do you have a link to a to your website or to an album where or some sort of like a Google Drive where I can see more information, and more photos, more videos, more written descriptions about your particular horse? If you guys were to reach out to us, we would have sent you right before the Mustang makeover, we would have sent you this link to Reina where it has a brief description about her, has her capture date and it has all of these photos that were taken throughout her journey. And we have more videos down here below, everything from the day that we picked her up to her first ride, to her getting blow dried, um, before because the, the farrier called me in the last second, I remember, to us taking her out to the cross country field and taking her through the water here. And I'll let this video play through because she's a big champ. She just went cantering right through the water and we made a little circle through. They were first time riding in the two rain as well as her being rented in the arena, actually when a client was coming to look at to potentially purchase her, 
and there's a guy weed eating in the background. So these videos here give you a lot more of a deeper look than maybe what a sales video would provide you. But when you reach out to these trainers, you can say, hey, can I, do you have a link to where I can see more about this horse? And that, what that does is it doesn't cost them any time. It's a very straightforward, easy question for you to ask. And if they say, yes, go here, then you have a plethora of more information available to you and you're not sitting there wasting time playing 20 questions with them. Now, if they don't have a website or they don't have a link to something else, then it's perfectly fine to go ahead and let's get into the questions that we would need to ask our trainer. But right before, if you guys have made it this far in the video and you didn't do this before, make sure that you click that like, that, click that like button here on the video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and then hit that notification bell so that you guys get notified. Guys, again, this is how you can support this channel. This is how we keep providing more and more videos to you guys every single week. We are here to help you along your horsemanship journey and in your personal life. So guys, thanks for going ahead take them the second, click that like button, click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Now let's go ahead and keep going here. The second question that I want to go ahead and ask right out of the gate is what, how much are they asking to sell this horse for? Now, if you're doing a private treaty sale and they're selling them in a group or on an app or on a website or something like that, you might already know the price of the horse and you probably, you shouldn't read, if, if you can't afford the horse or if your budget's not close to what the number is, don't waste each other's time asking 72,000 questions when you know you won't buy the horse in the first place, right? It's just being common sense of being respectful. But in an auction type setup, we can set reserves. Now, in the Extreme Mustang Makeover Auction, you cannot set a reserve, but through personal experience, and I've done this and it was very controversial, but I'll admit to it because I still stand by it, is that trainers can bid to buy their own horses back because they can't set a reserve on their horses. So in order for the trainers to protect their investment, oftentimes they will be willing to buy their horses back and then sell them later. On this particular auction, what I would end up doing is, is saying, will you be bidding on this horse during the auction? And if they say no, then you have an idea of saying, okay, then the horse is gonna sell for whatever it sells for and they're not gonna be bidding on it. So essentially they're not gonna be ticking the price up to any degree and they're, you're not competing against a trainer. And at that point, it might be a little more difficult to gauge how much the horse is gonna sell for. But you can always ask the trainer, how much interest have you had? If the person says, oh yeah, I've got 10 people that are lined up, there's more of a chance that there could be some competitive bidding and you can always ask them, well, do you know what other people are gonna be willing to spend? Don't be afraid to ask those questions. Okay, you're, you're trying to make sure that you have the most educated situation going into an auction because you don't want to get into an auction and get emotional. You want to be in an auction and be tactful. You want to make sure you have a plan. You already have the budget, you're going to stick to the budget. And so, but if you ask that question and the trainer says, yes, I will be bidding on this horse. The next thing you need to figure out is, do you want to keep this horse? Which is just the situation that we just talked about. Or, and if they say, do you, well, are you bidding to keep this horse? And they say, no, that means that no, they're not bidding on to keep this horse, but they're, they're essentially trying to set the reserve on this individual horse. So then I would follow up that question with, well, how much do you need this horse to sell for? And they're going to give you a number and that's going to give you an idea. And if they say, well, I need the horse to sell for 4,000, then you say, good, that's my budget. And if they say, well, I need the horse to sell for 2500 you say, good, that's in my budget. That's within my budget. That works out fine. If they say, well, I need it to sell for $10,000 and you have a $4,000 budget, then, and you know that they're going to bid on that horse and they're not going to stop bidding unless it gets up to that $10,000 number, you say, hey, I really appreciate your time. I absolutely love your horse, but unfortunately that's not within my budget. And you go to the next horse on your list. But by asking people what the dollar amount is and being honest with people up front about what your budget is up front, you will save a lot of time and a lot of hassle. I personally experienced this with Raina last year in the in this makeover event where no one wanted to share their budget because they didn't want to start the bidding before the auction started. And I had a number in mind of what I wanted her to sell for, but all these people, I had like eight to 10 people that were interested in this horse, no one wanted to share their budget. 
So what ended up happening was a lot of people ended up disappointed when I bought the horseback. And you know, that just kind of is what it is. But for us, it was an investment. So guys, be honest, be up for up front with people, ask those questions about the budget. And then if say, Hey, that horse is within my budget. And if you're buying horses, private treaty, right, then you already know what the price is. And if the person says, well, the horse is 15,000 and your budget's 12,000, then, you know, honestly, it depends on how flexible. If your budget is 12,000 hard and fast, then you can say, listen, the best I can do is 12,000 if you decide that you really want to purchase this horse. And then it's up to the seller if they're willing to take that much of a discount and give you that much of a discount on the horse. But moving right along to questions to ask these trainers. So we've already watched the sales videos. You'll be able to see what kind of bridle these horses are being ridden in. Some will look like snaffle bits, some will look like shank bits, other ones will look like halters, and other ones will look like um, more traditional rawhide hackamore with hair reins. All these different um, options that horses can be ridden in. You want to ask them what do they ride in best and what do they have experience being ridden in. And because you might prefer to ride in a hackamore, you might prefer to ride in a snaffle bit, you might like to ride in a pork shank bit. Um, whatever you decide, whatever works for you, you want to see if that horse has experience being ridden in that particular style of tack. Now, this is really specific to this this auction because there's there's trainers of all different backgrounds using different types of tack and equipment. And the reason I bring this up is because just because you see a shank bit doesn't mean it's the same shank bit that you have hanging in your tack room. Just because you see a snaffle bit hanging in the horse's mouth doesn't mean it's the same snaffle that you have at home. There's a lot of different types of bits and different mouthpieces and you want to make sure, and there's a lot of different kinds of hackamores that are out there. So you want to ask them the specifics of what that horse is most comfortable being ridden in, what the horse's experience being ridden in, and then match that with what you plan on riding in. And Sometimes the trainer goes, well, yeah, I haven't ridden them in that exact bit which you own, but the horse should be fine because I've ridden them something very similarly. And you might ask them, well, what was the similar bit that you rode them in? They might send you a picture of it. And then you can kind of make the decision from there and see how similar it is. But you want to ask those types of questions. And another thing that you want to ask, particularly with this event, but also um, across the board when you're looking at other horses, is has other people ridden and worked with this horse. Um, a lot of times if they're with a trainer, sometimes the trainer is the only one that's getting on them. And then those horses get that relationship. These Mustangs, they can get very one dimensional. And we want to make sure as a trainer, we want as someone that was, has brought along Mustangs, we want to make sure that they're getting used to other people very frequently early on. Um, this is something that some people make mistakes with and so when you're looking to purchase a horse in this particular auction You want to make sure that that horse has experience with other people And that's important because you're going to still have to pretend to spend the time to build that relationship build that bond with them But it's different than your domesticated bred horses that are just used to people from day one All right, some horses domesticated horses they people are just part of the world whereas these Mustangs people are a different element and they bond with certain people, but there's, they sometimes remain a little bit skeptical. And so we want to make sure from the training side that we're getting those horses around new people and from someone looking to buy one. Ideally, these horses are good with multiple individuals and in that they've been ridden by other people and they've been worked with on the ground by other people. They've been groomed with and been caught by other people. That way, it's easier of a transition when they get delivered to your house or you go pick them up after you purchase them and they can adapt to a new person and they trust humans in general, not so much an individual human. Okay. And so the other thing that you want to ask these people, and this is one of my favorite questions to ask and I just get quiet. Okay. I don't tell people out of the gate what I'm looking for, right? I've asked them how much the horse is going to cost if they're putting a reserve on the horse and then the next thing, even before the bit and bridle question, okay, I apologize I got this out of order. Even before the bit and bridle question is I would ask them, what kind of person or lifestyle would best suit this horse? I will ask this of horses in this auction or horses that are um, being sold private treaty, okay? What kind of person or lifestyle would fit this horse best? Someone that knows that horse really well has a picture in their mind of what would best work for this horse. 
and just let them talk. And they're going to tell you about how many times a week it should be rode, how the horse likes to be worked with, what it likes to do, and if it does better in a stall, if it does better turned out all the time, if it's used to coming in and out of the barn, you just let them talk about all the lifestyle, because lifestyle is very broad, and you just let them talk about that. And maybe as they say stuff, you ask a few questions, but that's a very open-ended question. You say, well, because they don't know what kind of rider you are, they don't know what kind of experience you have. And if they say, oh, they're good with just anybody, well, then you might ask them, well, are they are they better with someone with more experience, or do they are they good with just a beginner? And don't don't tell them what your what your skill level is. Don't ask, tell them what your lifestyle is. Just ask questions because what you're going to get is a more real, authentic answer. Hopefully, given they're being honest. And with the Mustang Group, I have full faith that they're actually going to be honest with you about those things. But it gives you an opportunity just to let somebody speak. You can hear how they're saying it. How are they speaking about it fluently? Are they stuttering over it? Do they sound skeptical about it? Are they making things up? You can just listen to them, right? And this is something that I would get them on the phone. And I would ask them this, like Facebook Messenger works fine, but it's easy for people just to paint a picture on Facebook Messenger versus say, hey, can I just call you and talk to you about this horse? If they say no, because they just don't want to talk to other people, I'm probably not, I'm probably just going to scratch that horse off my list. Because I need to talk to somebody. I'm not about to buy an animal without being able to talk to the person who's worked with this horse for a long period of time, or an extended period of time for a long period, for a lot of hours. Another thing that I would ask, and one of the final things that I would be asking of these people is, can you provide references such as to a veterinarian, a farrier, or a dentist, or a chiropractor that they use on a regular basis? Asking for references isn't something where you're questioning their, their value or their worth as a trainer. You're just looking to making sure that you're making an educated decision and an educated purchase. And one of the best benefits about this is that when you ask for references, such as like, hey, do you have references such as better, farrier, or dentist, or chiropractor that you use regularly? And they say, oh yeah, sure, I can send you Dr. So-and-so's information and uh, this dentist or this chiropractor that I use on a regular basis. Be like, yeah, absolutely, that would be fantastic. Have they actually worked with this horse before? And if they say no, no, they actually haven't worked with this specific horse, but I use them all the time. Well, do you have somebody that you could use as a reference that has actually worked with this horse? And just wait and see what they say. But if they say, yeah, oh yeah, they've, they've, done, they've been a farrier for mine for years and they've done all the trims and the shoes on this particular horse and you can go through that, then that's great. You know why? Because you're going to get a reference. You're going to get to someone who knows this person as well as has experience with this horse. And that is absolutely crucial because you, particularly with these Mustangs, you want to know how these horses are to deal with from the farrier to the vet to the chiropractor, all of these types of things. And it's another person that can vouch. And honestly, if you get someone that's really, really honest, they can say, oh yeah, like this person's great. They spend so much time. This horse is super easy to get along with. Or you might have somebody that gives you a straightforward reference that tells you some information that makes you steer clear of buying a horse from that person. And that's what references are there for. Right? We're not trying to see it. When you're buying a horse or you're doing your background checks on these types of things, we're trying to make sure that we're, we're looking out for ourselves. We're not trying to poke holes in another person's program. We're not trying to find all the reasons not to buy a particular horse, but we're trying to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to cover our bases so that when we invest our hard earned money, that we are getting out what we what we need to that is going to best fit our situation. So we've asked these we've already asked the trainer for references. We've asked them to share with us what per, the person and lifestyle would be like that would best suit this type of horse. We've asked them what kind of bit and bridle they're used to being ridden in. You know, and a lot of times if you've seen the video already, you know if they go English or Western, so you have a bit of a preference there. And then we can also ask them stuff like, do they get turned out with other horses? How are they in turnout? That's kind of along with the lifestyle type aspect. We've talked to them about 
the purchase price and if they're planning on bidding on the horse, all of these things will help us make a much better educated decision as we go through this. I will throw one other thing in there and you can always do this as well, which is you can have pre-purchase exams done with these horses. Um, regardless, probably, sometimes if they're auctions, there might be, the consigners might have certain regulations, but you can contact the trainer to say, hey, if I pay for a pre-purchase exam, which should include flexions, a jog, as well as x-rays, then, you know, it might cost you anywhere from about $600 to $1,000 for a full pre-purchase workup on this. You would pay that out of pocket as long as the person that owns the horse is willing to arrange to have the vet come out or you can find your own vet to go out there and do the exam for you and just have to coordinate between. That's a way you can make sure you're not dealing with OCDs, lamenesses, uh, potential laminitis that might have happened that someone's not disclosing, right? If you have that extra money in your budget, you can always do that as well. But guys, that is what we have for you today. I really hope that the, this detailed video is a bit longer than, of course, I wanted it to go, but I think that we bring a lot of value. We went through the sales videos, brought all these insightful questions. Always be sure, ask us questions in the comments below. We are here to help you along with this journey. We want to help you make sure that you're making educated decisions when you're buying your horses because you're buying your partnerships. You know, you're buying a horse that can be a part of your life for a long, long time and it's an important decision. It's an important investment that we're making. It's a hefty investment into this and it's ultimately a friendship and a partnership that can last for a long, long time. And all the, we guys, we have horses so that we can enjoy horses. We don't want to end up buying horses and end up dreading them and getting burned out on the whole thing because it's putting a financial strain, an emotional strain on us. So take the time up front. Be patient. Do your homework before you buy these horses. And then once you do, then you can be excited about the journey and then you can make adjustments from there as you go on. It's always a journey. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be hardships. There's going to be trials and errors and lessons learned, but there's going to be a lot of damn good memories along the way. So guys, Colton Woods here with Colton Woods Horsemanship. Thank you all for tuning in. Be sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because we will be tuning in with you guys very, very soon with another video here on Colton Woods Horsemanship. Y'all have a blessed one. Take care, guys.